Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. The new Screensavers is brought to you by Rocket Mortgage from Quicken Loans. Introducing Rate Shield Approval. If you're in the market to buy a home, Rate Shield Approval locks up your rate for up to 90 days while you shop. It's a real game changer. Learn more and get started at rocketmortgage.com slash NSS. A stupid, large 4K TV, the Galaxy Note 9 unpacked, and a gaming laptop with ultra book sensibilities. And now, Live from the Twitch Studios in Petaluma, California, it's the new Screensavers. That's the legendary Terry McGovern, San Francisco radio legend. You've seen him on many, many movies and TV shows. He, I didn't know this. He lives in Petaluma, California. He is also the voice of Stormtrooper number two. Holy cow. In the original Star Wars. <laughs> he, uh, he's the guy who said, those aren't the droids you're looking for. That's him right there. Really great to have Terry in studio. That's uh, awesome. A, a guy I've, le I've literally idolized my whole radio career. And uh, and always wanted to be like, and he is uh, he's, and he's local, a local. Yeah, he's, he lives in Petaluma. But he smiled on you instead. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, because he lives in Petaluma, he left out the words from beautiful downtown Petaluma. <laughs> he just said. <laughs> this is episode 169, recorded Saturday, August 11th, 2018. I'm Leo Laporte. Hey, I am Robert Heron. Hey, Robert, it's good to see you. It's a pleasure. Heron Fidelity. We're Robert, of course, also. You know, Terry was on the old screensavers many years ago. Yeah. Robert, a regular Alumni. on the old screensavers, as you all know. And he's now a uh, co-host with Patrick Norton. You guys do, what's the name of the show you do? AV Excel. I Just never can AV remember Excellence. that. Yeah. Oh, I get it. AV Excellence. Now yeah. I'll remember it. Shortened for AV. easier... Excellent. Browsing, so to just speak. type it in. He's also <laughs> Heron Fidelity. He runs his own uh, what calibration business? That Consultation what calibration. I work for either private clients or the manufacturers, and I help them make better picture. He helped make a better picture at my I den. Do. He calibrated two years ago. You and Scott calibrated my uh, my LG OLED TV. We brought Robert Shorts. here because we needed his help. We have. A, as Terry said, stupid large 4K <laughs> TV, a 100-inch Ultra HD 4K Smart Laser TV. Roger's gonna, Roger, Robert's going to give us his uh, take on uh, this crazy TV. Tell us a little yeah. bit about this thing. Well, it's a 4K short-throw laser projector. That it's a projector. Has a pretty interesting price point of about $9,000. <laughs> and before you... Just cringe at how much that could be. It does include the screen itself, which is kind of special in its own right, plus a very sweet Harman Kardon audio system, a 2.1 setup that goes far beyond what you're going to have built in any flat panel TV. We've so. had it in studio uh, for about uh, a week, and it's been terrible for productivity. <laughs> Everybody comes I, in here. I did, too. We were watching Blade Runner 2049 on it. We've got the Blue Planet from uh, the BBC on it right now. We'll talk a little bit about that really interesting screen and what you think of and this as a short-throw projection television. It's probably the least expensive way you can get what looks like a direct view 100 inch screen. Exactly, plus it's the laser technology I think is very beneficial to a lot of people and we'll get into that. Already so. producer Jerry has given up on the show and is watching penguins. <laughs> it's a distraction. <laughs> the new, we have a new laptop in here. It's a very uh, interesting Ooh. gaming laptop. You probably know about Razer. You said you have a Razer mouse, I right? I picked a new one up this week. Yeah, I use a Razer mouse at home. Absolutely love it. This is their Razer Blade. It is a 15 inch gaming laptop that has some interesting things going on. We'll talk about it in a second. Hey, and I think Jason Howell, the Android expert, will be in the show later to give a run-through of all the new stuff just released with the upcoming Android Pie. Android always, the code name's always desserts. Pie operating system. Can you do the pie? Now, I don't remember A and B, but there was 
I, what was C? Was it D was a donut, right? E was eclair. F was froyo. They've got statues on the lawn, a, a Google of all of these. G was gingerbread. H was honey. You have a better memory of this honey than I do. Honey comb. comb. Okay, honey comb. H I was ice cream, right? Yeah. J was jelly bean. K, this is a fun game. K. <laughs> what was K? Kit Kat. Kit Kat. That's uh, the one I didn't like because it had a brand name in it. And I think Google decided maybe we shouldn't have done that. Oh, except that they did it again in a little bit. L is lollipop. M is marshmallow. marshmallow. That I remember. N is nougat or nougat, nougat, as some people say. O is the most is the current version. Oreo, Oreo. another brand name, right? Finally, finally. Cookie and then time. P is now. Actually, I have it on my uh, on my uh, Pixel Two. Anybody who's got a Ooh. Google phone will have Android P, the final release version. That would be my next phone. phone. Well, the Pixel 3 is due out any day That's now. In fact, it's kind of, kind of surprising because I thought they'd wait to release Android Pie for the new phone as Apple waits before they release a new iOS version for the new phone. But they didn't. And the new, the new Android, this is the uh, Pixel 2. The Pixel 3 won't be out maybe for a couple of months. I think having one of the Android phones, that's the primary benefit. You just get yeah. the software before pretty much everyone. Yeah, the Google so, ones. Yeah, I'm really happy with Especially with, with some this. carriers out there who take their sweet time upgrading old Android phones. Or even relatively new ones, for that matter. <laughs> <Yes>. so, <laughs> uh, that's depressing, isn't it? Oh. Uh, also coming up, Megan Maroney. She wants you to get a good night's sleep. She's going to show you some of the tech gadgets she takes to bed Ooh. with her every single night. Well, we also have Call for Help and the Mailbag. And I'm going to be helping you guys answer some of your burning home theater questions and give you good, good picture and visual and sound advice. I wish we could have you here every week because you really are great on that. And there, this is a huge area that people are very interested in. Of course, you have Scott Wilkinson on the radio show. But I, you know, anytime you want to come up, Robert, please do. Oh. It's always a pleasure to have Robert Heron in studio with us. My pleasure. We're going to invite right now in Gadget Reviews editor Sherlyn Lowe in to the uh, Skype box over here. Hi, Sherlyn. Because Hello. she, like all of us, was watching earlier this week when Samsung had its unpacked event. Were you at the event? Yeah, I was. Yeah, I was live blogging for Engadget. Fun. And in <laughs> fact, no. you, you, no, not fun. <laughs> Stressful. Stressful. Yeah. Live blogging, is that hard because you got to type the whole time? Mm-hmm, yeah. And you have and to have something And when the Wi-Fi to... doesn't oh. hold up, it's not great. The Wi-Fi is always terrible at events like this. There's yeah. too many journalists, not enough bandwidth. So uh, the Note 9 is out. You have one. <gasps> Can we... But I pre-ordered it. When are we going to get it? Uh, it's going to be in stores August 24th. I'm thinking that's when they'll ship them out okay. as well. Pretty soon, then. What's so you pre-ordered it. Did you? Which bundle did you pick? Because you could get either 15,000... B bucks for Fortnite, or five twelve five twelve gigabytes, right? Oh, that one I didn't hear about. Depending, I think that might be a carrier. I think you have to uh, live in Goody. Singapore to get that one, unfortunately. But there, really? there was a bundle with the five twelve gigabytes for pre-orders. Uh, oh. This is that's the biggest difference. There are a couple of differences from the Note Eight. It looks a lot like the Note Eight. What's different? Yes. Here are the differences. Uh, one that I pointed out earlier on the pre-show where your fingerprint sensor is now sitting below the dual cameras instead of at the side, making it easier to reach for and you won't smudge up your lens so much. The screen is also slightly bigger. <laughs> instead of 6.3 inches, you have a 6.4 inch oh. screen here. Yeah, it's tiny, tiny bit bigger. Uh, also, the colors of the S Pen, instead of a boring blackish blue, you now have one that's color matched to your phone. I have the lavender that's pretty. color variant. Yep. It's very pretty. And the people with the blue phone have a yellow, neon yellow stylus. That's pretty cool looking. Honestly, it looks like the funky shoelaces for your, you know, <laughs> kicks. Stylish. Yeah. I, I don't, uh, what's a kick? I don't know. I'm too old for that. Oh, boy. I don't know what those right, are. I'm not going to explain it to you. <laughs> so one of the things that's cool is, and this they, this has been around on, as uh, notes for a while, you can draw on the screen even if it's mm -hmm. locked. But show them this because this is really cool. When she pops the pen and draws on the screen, it draws in the color of the pen. That's that a good neat. Yeah. That's a sweet default. I like that. If you have uh, the yellow stylus, it's like a neon yellow ink. Wow. As well, I've seen it on. Super yeah, it's cool. actually cute. Yeah, when you save it, and you can save it to your notes app. It opens up uh, on a 
white background instead of on a black background, so the color doesn't pop as much. Oh. But it's still a nice feature. I mean, yeah, and at least you've got it backing. there, right? Yeah, so exactly. Which is this in the United States? They're using the Qualcomm eight forty five. Mm -hmm, yes. And the Exynos Octa-Core, rest of the world. Uh, I actually am not sure in which regions the Exynos versions okay. uh, are available. The one I have is the Snapdragon 845, and it is in the U.S., yeah. Pretty fast to feel good? It's, it's, I mean, it's remarkably fast. I think that, though, these days people can't really tell the difference between, you know, performance bump from the 835 and the 845. Right. What we are going to notice is maybe extended battery life. Uh, the 835 lasted pretty long already. With this phone, you have a 4,000 milliamp hour battery. Oh, that's wow. huge. That's much bigger than yeah. last time. Much bigger than last time. Much bigger than most things that are out there. Um, I can't remember, but I think the Note 8 was 3350, something like that. Yeah, so. they had to drop it back down with the Note 8. Because yeah, because the, the, the 7 <laughs> was big, but it had other problems. It had other problems. We shall yeah. not speak of those problems. Shall not. <laughs> Isn't that funny how they've left that in the rearview mirror? Nobody's really talking about that anymore. Yeah, Fire. I think everyone no. doesn't want to remember that that happened. Uh, I feel like you can't avoid it because it has such a big battery now that you want to you kind of want to ask questions if it's safe but uh to that end another difference from the note 8 is that this has what samsung calls a water carbon cooling system oh my god i know <laughs> they've had they've had water-based cooling systems in phones before let's be clear they have one, they have they have it's a minuscule amount of water you know you can't hear things sloshing around in there there's no. nothing liquid in there well there is but very very tiny amount with the water carbon cooling system is supposed to it has a three times bigger heat sink uh they call it a thermal spreader and it should dissipate heat better away from components like the cpu or the gpu and so you can run things like games like you see on screen now without hitting into being throttled um as quickly as before i haven't tested this i don't really see myself as coming up with a way to test this. Well, uh, I recently left my phone laying on the car seat for a little while in direct sunlight and a Galaxy phone. And within about five minutes, that thing was so hot, it wouldn't even launch an app. I had to like go stick it in the refrigerator for a little bit just to get it to cool off. <laughs> okay, don't stick it in no, the refrigerator. Don't leave things in the sunlight. And if that cooling system can help, hey, all the better. Yeah, but battery life, all, all phones will me. stop working if they get too hot. Just but a little. The idea is also, and I have to say, I've experienced this on an S9 and a Note 8. If it's too hot to hold, <laughs> it's no fun playing the game. So a little better no. cooling might be, uh, might be a good thing. What else is new? It's a huge amount of storage. Yes, it, the base models now start out at 128 gigs of storage. Uh, and then you can bump up or upgrade to the 512 gig version. That's the two available. You also get an SD card slot or micro SD card slot. Uh, and Samsung's pushing out its new 512 gigabyte uh, SD cards as well. So if you wow. have the 512 base model and then the 512 gigs SD card, you could be carrying around one terabyte of space on your phone. That's insane. Awesome. <laughs> Who needs you want to. that? That's insane. Well, somebody Lossless must. Lossless audio. You will, <laughs> you'll pay, you'll pay a pretty price, phones. though. If you want a 512 gig phone with an 8 gigs of RAM, how much is that? It's thirteen hundred. Oh, twelve hundred or thirteen hundred dollars. Holy um, cow! 1250 right? Now, we'll split the difference. $1,250. Yeah, $1, and 1000 bucks for the base model. So... Mm -hmm. It looks like Samsung was watching Apple and watching the iPhone 10 and seeing how people reacted to that $1,000 price point in the iPhone 10 and said, oh, they still sold a few. Okay, let's do it. I would say they sold way more than a few yeah. in the iPhone 10, but yeah. I think that's a very different phone. The iPhone 10, the notes have always been slightly, you know, more advanced than the S counterpart uh, and previously always been, you know, very expensive as well, but people who use notes just really are looking for that beastly specs list, right? right and right. this year they've returned that's to beast. form in terms of that. Yeah, yeah, that's a beast. I have an S9 Plus. Do you think I should upgrade to the Note 9? I think you're good unless you really want to use the S Pen, which, by the way, has a few new features. Oh, tell case. us about it. So I've just taken the S Pen out of the phone, and now what I'm going to do is I'll press and hold on the pen button here. Yeah. And oh, look! It, there you go. You're taking a picture. Oh, very cool. This is using the rear camera right now. It's uh, it's here. It's pointing at the rear camera. So this is I'm like a remote, so you could use it if you wanted to take a group picture, stand back, put it on a 
you know, on the wall yeah, or something. Yeah, but it does more than that. I'm going to double click on here now. Oh, it flipped around. The camera around. It just switched it around, and then I can press the button one time, and it just took a picture. Um, I mean, this is my favorite use case of the new S Pen feature so far, but basically you can use it as a remote control for a lot of things, not just the camera. Um, by default, long pressing it launches the camera, but you can change that to do launch your favorite app. Um, you can also use it to click through pictures in your gallery. Uh, you can use it to click to a next slide. You can use it to skip to the next song on your playlist. It is up to you to decide with compatible apps. Obviously, not all apps are compatible with this. Uh, Samsung's making its SDK available to developers to help them integrate this feature in. But for now, you can use it with Google suite of apps, Samsung's own apps, Microsoft uh, PowerPoint and other Microsoft apps, and Spotify. So it's quite useful so far. It's, it's using Bluetooth to do that? Yes, Bluetooth low energy. There's a Bluetooth low energy module in the phone and a super capacitor, I believe is near the nib, and it will hold enough power for about 200 clicks or 30 minutes idle. And then every time you slide it back into its slot, it just recharges. And according to Samsung, it'll fully recharge in under a minute. That's one of the so, advantages of super capacitors. They charge very, very, very quickly. That's a handy yeah. accessory. I think that's kind of cool. That's pretty cool. And with that 4096 levels of pressure sensitivity for the screen. 4096? I believe that's what it's told by it, saying. How so, would you even know the difference between 4095 and 4096? <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> Given Samsung has some of the very best OLED screens on their phones. That's all about specs. That's it that's, is. It's a bragging, yeah. right? But I'd like to see what artists might think of it as well. So, uh, I dabble in drawing. Uh, I recently reviewed the Galaxy Tab S4, and I the pen on that one is wonderful because it's a little oh. bit bigger than this. It's more rounded. Uh, but using this pen to your point, Leo, I haven't actually really noticed a huge difference in the pressure sensitivity. I can't get that much. Thicker lines by trying right. to um, it's press one, harder. One better. Oh, yeah. can't really it's so see. bright. We. Oh, you're a good yeah. artist. Oh, Thank you're you. good. I like that. I'm, you're being kind. <laughs> well, just, you're better than me. Like okay, thing. I take it back. But uh, <laughs> yeah, that's not great. See, there now you I can see it. Never mind. No, that's cool though. I think that was something that even with the yeah, you're very good with the earliest notes. That was. The selling one of the selling points. I remember CES. They had people with easels all over okay. town in Vegas on their notes, and, and that was like the Note One or Note Two, drawing pictures and things like that. So this is that's that's a good use case for it. My daughter is an artist. She, I gave her the Note Eight. She loves it. Awesome. She uses it all the time to sketch. So that's a nice point. Uh, the problem now. I'm sorry to butt in, but so far I've realized that um, with a. Uh, remote thing. You, it used to be that the S Pen never needed recharging, and technically you don't right. need to recharge this. Right. But now I've actually, as draw, when I'm drawing, I take a while to get everything you know in place and stuff like that. I have gotten on the phone a low battery warning for the S Pen. Um, oh, that's and I've so weird. That so that super capacitor yeah. could be a little more super. Uh, Just a little. Could be. Yeah. Uh. I mean, if for, for people who are really thinking about drawing seriously and like Beautiful works of art on this phone. The S Pen might not hold up. You can only draw but for half an hour. I, take breaks. <laughs> exactly. Recharge. That's a that's a very interesting uh, point. What else? Uh, the Dex. Dex is not dead. You can use. I have a Dex Puck. So you, you put, like it? What am I going to use it for? You connect it to a big screen, a keyboard, and a mouse. You put the phone in the puck, and then it's a phone on a big screen with a keyboard and a mouse. I, I understand the idea. It's kind of like a Chromebook a little bit, maybe, where you can use it, you know, and you carry it in your pocket so your data is always with you. And I guess if you have a terabyte, what do you think? You like it? Yeah, yeah. As you see, that article that I wrote that was published yesterday, I did not. Yeah. I do not have very um, high hopes for DeX becoming a long-term thing for Samsung, although they are going to keep trying to make it happen. Here's the thing. I reviewed... Dex recently on the Tab S4, and on the Tab S4 it makes little to no sense because <laughs> you could just make a Chrome OS tablet or right. a Windows tablet. Right. Um, Android is not really suited for multitasking on that my, format. My point exactly. Even though Samsung has some special apps designed for Dex, it's you know it just doesn't feel like a, a, a usable system. 
I think it's a nice backup feature to have when you, right. if you just simply must, out of nowhere, you have to get that work done. You have to plug it in right. through HDMI at the airport's terminals, like screen or something. Sure, but not. Don't make right. it the the main point of your product. There's a new watch. Yeah, I saw it. Tell us about that. The Galaxy Watch. The name is completely different from Samsung's previous watch line, which was Gear or something. Gear. Yeah, something, I have right? an S3 so, Frontier, which actually I think is the best non-Apple smartwatch out. I really liked it. Uh, I there are other smartwatches now that will contend to that, but uh, okay. the Gear line was always pretty strong. And the Galaxy Watch, even with the name being changed quite a lot, isn't that much different from a Gear. Still watch, uses right? the, the bezel to control it. Exactly. It just yeah. feels like a Gear S4 or okay. like a Gear Refined rather than a brand new thing from the ground up. It is prettier, sort of. I'm still kind of in two minds about that. I, it might be a little chunky, but uh, I can't tell if the ones that we saw were the LTE versions or the Wi-Fi versions. That's a new feature is that you now have LTE connectivity. Um, and if they are that thin and they do last as long as promised, which is four to six days, <sighs> With LTE, that's impressive. If sure. not, not sure. Sherlyn, it's so great to have you. Sherlyn Lowe is in Gadget Reviews Editor. You're the best. Thank you so Thank much you. for being here today. Take care, Sherlyn. Yeah. We, we have one more thing that Samsung announced, and I know Sherlyn, Sherlyn doesn't even have access to this. This is the brand new, uh, I'm so excited because we're the first to have it, the brand new Bixby-powered smart speaker from Samsung. Are you ready? Drum roll. Please, here it is. They call it the Galaxy Home. It's amazing. And let me let me just echo. Play John Denver. Resuming Spotify. Aw. Coming out of the new Galaxy Home <laughs> speed. <laughs> and it cooks hot dogs. <laughs> okay. I'm a fan of the chrome touches. <laughs> <laughs> this is a simulation, an amazing simulation of the new Galaxy Home. I don't know who wants a Bixby-powered smart speaker, <sighs> but thank God there finally is one. I bet you it sounds good. <laughs> it probably sounds better than this. <laughs> the Weber Jr., Smokey Ooh, Joe. Smokey Joe in the house. Smokey Joe in the house with apparently an Alexa in it. Well, you know, that durable finish. <laughs> I think... Let's close the vent on that. <laughs> taped it. AKG. It's taped it that AKG vent. That's not going uh -huh. anywhere. Bixby. It needs a sub. Echo. Can we stick a sub in there? Stop. Yeah. <laughs> Stop. All right. We're gonna move oh, on. man. That is a long way to go for a joke. Jerry spent three vacation days building that. It's, it's amazing. Bad. The gaffer's tape. What made we it. didn't mention is, and, but you saw it on the screen, is that Samsung uh, is going to get Fortnite on the Galaxy 9. And Fortnite, it's exclusive. The, the hottest game on iOS. The only place you could play that on an Android phone currently. For three days. <laughs> really? <laughs> Just three days? <laughs> For three. We were worried because I read this and I thought, oh, it's going to be three months. It's going to be 90 days. They get no. their 72 hours. and Yeah, so that's just a couple. Then everyone days. else can have it. Yeah, then you'll be able to. Until, let's see, what does it say there? In the next few days, it'll come out. Okay, so they got like. And. Uh, almost two weeks. Yeah, whatever. You'll be able to, exp yeah, anyway. V-Bucks. And, then, and then, then I could put it on. V-Bucks for life. Actually, I want to play Fortnite. Now we're talking. On a 100-inch screen. Laser Forget a short pro projector. 2.1 <laughs> audio. That's coming up in just a bit. We're going to go over to the couch to take, uh, get Robert's take on the biggest mm. screen I've ever seen. In the house. But first, a word from our sponsor, Rocket Mortgage. If you're ready to buy that house, you, you should get a house big enough to hold a 100-inch screen. Without Absolutely. In the old days, you get a 100-inch screen, you actually have to build the house around the TV. <laughs> because you couldn't get in the door, so you'd have to open the roof or something. So anyway, if you're going to buy a new home, you know that it's the biggest purchase you're going to make. It's the biggest check you'll ever write. It's bigger than that 100-inch TV. And it's a, you know, it's a bit of like a <gasps> heavy breathing <gasps> moment. Why make it more anxious? Let's show you how to get that loan, buy that house right with Rocket Mortgage from Quicken Loans. Number one lender in the country. For good reason, they're number one in customer satisfaction for eight years. According to J.D. Power, eight years running 
five consecutive years for mortgage servicing. So they're a great company to work with. And they really care a lot about you, about the customer experience. That's why they created Rocket Mortgage, an entirely online mortgage, mortgage approval process. So you don't, you don't have to uh, go through that whole nightmare scenario of going to the bank and filling out an application and faxing them information over a period of days, weeks, in my case, months. No, with Rocket Mortgage, they've got these levels. It's so great. You'll go to rocketmortgage.com slash NSS. Uh, you, will, uh, you will fill out a few simple questions. You don't need even to go to the attic or get paperwork. You kind of know it. And then within uh, under 10 minutes, I'd say, in most cases, they're going to give you something they call qualified approval. That means you got, you're good. You're good. You're good. We got the information. We approve it. The next step, and this takes a little longer. It takes about 24 hours because a mortgage uh, lender, the broker, will review your, uh, I guess they call it a loan officer, will review your application and then give you something very important called verified approval. Now you're basically a cash buyer. When you go to buy a house, the seller says, well, you know, is there a contingency on your loan? Nope, I am, I am a verified. I have verified approval. That's as good as cash. Once you get that, you get something that really takes the anxiety out of home hunting, rate shield approval. They will lock your rate for up to 90 days. You have up to three months to shop without worrying about the rates going up. As rates go up, and they are going up right now, that adds a lot to the anxiety. You don't know how much that house is going to cost, really, because if the rate goes up a quarter of a point, that's tens of thousands of dollars more to buy that house. That's why you're going to love rate shield approval. And here's the best part. If the rates go up, yours does not. It's locked. It's guaranteed. If the rates go down, yours goes down. So either way, you win. It's exactly what you'd expect from America's best mortgage lender. To get started, you go to rocketmortgage.com slash NSS. Rate shield approval only valid on certain 30-year purchase transactions. Additional conditions or exclusions may uh, apply based on Quicken Loans data in comparison to public data records. Equal housing lender, licensed in all 50 states, nmlsconsumeraccess.org number 3030. Rocketmortgage.com slash NSS. We thank them so much for making the new screensavers possible. We're sitting on the couch. Comfy. We're, it's time for me and Robert <laughs> Netflix and chill, baby. And when you chill, <laughs> what's the biggest TV you have? Uh, 65. Yeah, me couple too. couple of them, yeah. Yeah. That's kind of the standard for direct view. They, their hat, Sharp, I remember, made a 100-inch direct view LCD. I asked them how much. They said, well, you really, there's no price. That's the thing. <laughs> you you get a... If you break the 80-inch size, yeah, they kind of have to stop asking what the price yeah, is. Yeah, don't, don't ask. So this is one way to get a bigger screen, a projector. One of the very best. The problems with projectors are you got to get the projector far away in the back of the room. The brightness goes down. Uh, projectors are dim. They don't work so well in, uh, in lit rooms where the windows are All open. true. So uh, Hisense, which is an up-and-coming Chinese manufacturer, Hisense really has taken the market by storm. They've, they showed this at CES. This is their 100-inch projection TV. Laser, short throw. And oh, what's, what's that mean? It means, in effect, that there is a special mirror on this projector. So when the light is coming out of it, it needs to be placed very close to the screen itself in order to get the image appropriately shining onto that screen. This, this is it's only not, eight inches away from the wall. Exactly. It, in fact, if you had, and this is, I wasn't gonna get a TV like this because I didn't want to set up a projector distance and away and stuff like that. This is just basically the same footprint as my TV, right? Where I'd put the TV, I'd put the projector. You think about how this screen is less, well less than an inch thick and including its mounting bracket. And it's pretty light, you can... That too, and no TV at that size is gonna be that lightweight. So right. I, I think in general, installation is even easier than it would be with, say like a 70, 80, 90 inch screen of a typical LCD, let alone like a plasma or something like right. that. Now we have video of Chris from Hisense uh, installing it, actually a little time lapse we can show you. Uh, it comes in a box, it's fully assembled, so you're gonna get a mighty big box that's uh, nice in the sense that you don't have to deal with, that's the screen specifically. So that giant box comes with a pre-assembled screen that requires no tensioning. You basically put up the mounting bracket and there he is actually doing a measurement for good height. So that projector, when it's set up probably on that box, it will hit that screen just right. That's kind of important. In fact, Chris said, don't move the projector. No. Because once you get it set, you really want to 
leave it there. So this is not the kind of projector you're going to take outside. No. You're not going to move it around. It's going to be there. It's like you're, it's like a big, imagine a big heavy TV, even though the screen is not. And if you maybe have limited installation spots where putting a projector on the ceiling or mounted on a wall is just not going to happen. Right. The beauty of this is that, yeah, it's very close to the projector and also nobody it's very difficult for somebody to walk in front of the projection. That's the funny itself. thing. Let me show. Let me show you real quickly. Uh, if I'm standing here, there's. I'm not casting a shadow on the screen. I actually have to put my hand in front of the beam, which is here. So there's only a, this. This is the beam. Nobody's going to get in the way of this, which is great. Not no heads. All. No people getting up to get popcorn blocking your view. It kind of is like a direct view TV. It's very similar. And I think the viewing angles, especially with a screen of this type, which they call an ambient light rejecting screen. There's well, tell actually... me, yeah, because the screen is a little fancy. This isn't just a, a regular projection screen. What makes this projector work in a well-lit room is the screen itself. And what it's doing is using a, a miniaturized set of louvers, you could think of it as, where the screen is really optimized for light coming from just one specific direction. And in this case, it's coming from underneath the screen. And any other light sources in the room will be literally rejected or reflected less. Chris said that this is a Fresnel, like a Fresnel lens, or maybe if you've ever seen those uh, where you tilt the pictures and, you know... Oh, uh, like the 3D the, effects? The, yeah, it's kind of that. So it's bouncing, the light's hitting the screen from below, and then it's bouncing it straight out, perpendicularly out, so that we see the light as we should. There's no keystoning. Was Is that a a special thing you have to do, or is that part of the feature of the screen? That's just careful setup. You saw That's the trouble setup. he went to to make sure the screen was yeah. square, yeah. the surface it was placed on, that odds are the where the projector's currently sitting wasn't level to begin with, so he probably very carefully oh adjusted each of the feet to get it just right, like like so. But there is, a, a inside the projector, there's, a, a, as you can see, an image that you can use to calibrate it. Totally, to get but it squared up just right. Would you have to have an installer to put this in? Or not at all. No. No, I mean, if you're not comfortable, say, wall mounting a TV, then maybe you would want somebody to actually set that up for you. Right. So you could, so when you buy it, depending where you buy it, you could get an installation as part of the deal. At 10, oh, we didn't mention the price. I was kind of holding that for last. $9,000. <laughs> Can consider this though, okay. it, it is a laser based projection engine. One that means you likely will never ever have to worry about a lamp replacement. He said uh, 50,000 hours, which that, is really the lifetime. That of this, is a right? long, long time. Yeah. And with maybe to half brightness, it, you just won't ever have to deal with the situation where people are coming over and all of a sudden their projector goes pop and you don't have a spare lamp module. Right. And that just eliminates that hassle that. altogether. This is a smart TV. In fact, it's got the best remote I've ever I, seen. That remote is expensive. <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's beautiful, that is not a cheap remote. Aluminum. It also is simple. You know, even my Panasonic Viera from a couple of years ago has a That's much more some, complicated remote. It's got this some gravitas. Very simple. It is a smart TV, right? Oh, so yeah. There's a Netflix button, a, 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 a Amazon button, uh, 4K Now, and YouTube. Uh, That's so all this I need. has built in uh, smart TV features. We're watching right now, though, a Blu ray UHD HDR. Uh, uh, a disc. This is actually uh, BBC's uh, Blue Planet, which is Blue Planet Two is amazing. Highly recommended. Just a gorgeous. And I wanted an HDR disc because, in theory, this is HDR. But, but is it really? No. It is. <laughs> it is signal compatible. It is true 4K, which is something that not a lot of projectors a lot can of claim resolution. today. So that combination of say laser plus 4K is already pretty expensive uh, from any manufacturer. The thing that it's really kind of lacking and that any other projector at this price point is also lacking is the wide color palette that makes HDR content so vivid and, and, and that expanded color palette that better mimics life that, as we can see it. And so that's the one thing it's a little short on. Something really important to consider. When I go home and look at my LG OLED that you calibrated, that is an incredible contrast ratio. The black is true. Pitch black. It almost draws you in. The bright whites are so bright it, it hurts your eyes. Uh, even an LCD is going to have a, a broader dynamic range than this. This is HDR10 only. No projector does uh, Dolby Vision. And it really isn't as HDR as a direct view would be. On the other hand, it's a 100 inch screen. No direct view is going to give you 100 inches. And a, a relatively seamless looking image. It is also, right. I find, just easier on the eyes compared to a lot of LCD TVs you see out there. 
projection in general reminds me of the, the quality of good plasma televisions, where it's just, there's something about that like impulsive style display that just, it's, it's easier to watch for longer periods of time. And because you're dealing with a screen at 100 inches with 4K resolution, Detail perception on this is just fantastic. It's it, a great party TV because you can stand at any angle. If you are off 180 degrees to the edge, uh, it's still just as bright. It looks just, and I guess that's the screen. It, look at that. You can actually, so if we're watching, you know, the Super Bowl on this thing, I could have 100 people in here easy, and uh, it would be a great experience. That would be the screen everyone would watch. Yeah. And it's also a single chip DLP system, like you mentioned. It is doing some tricks to achieve the 4K resolution, but if you put up the actual test patterns and look at it, it is resolving 4K of resolution compared okay. to some other projectors that do basically they using 1080p imagers to up convert that right. almost to 4K. Still, this is just a, a fantastic experience. Also, because of its being a single chip, compared to many three-chip projectors out there, you won't have to deal with convergence adjustments and things like that, where you have to get the red, the blue, and the green image to overlap just perfectly. This has a single light path, so it is, ah, I took that back, it might have two light paths. But either way, because of that single chip doing the imaging, it is then able to just eliminate a, a common problem with every projector when you first set it up, right. making it a little easier. When uh, they announced this at CES this year, they also said we're gonna have a 150 inch. Ooh. I don't know how big. <laughs> that is really big. And they're gonna do a dual laser model. I don't know when that's gonna be. They were sh they've been showing the dual laser setup now for a couple of Would years. Would that be better? It will give you a much wider color palette, actually approaching, I believe it would hit 100% DCI and probably some decent percentage of the larger color space called Rec 2020, which is this, this new format that's part of HDR programming. That is it is, such, it is such a large color palette that no TV can properly hit currently. Wow. It's a good target to aim for down the road. Wow. But DCI, if you hear that mentioned frequently, that's what's used in Hollywood production. That's the P3 90, that Apple talks about all the time. 99% of what Hollywood does is in that P3 format, right. and a lot of the new HDR TVs can support that. This is 709. It's, it probably exceeds 709 a little bit, but it isn't hitting D, DCI P3 okay. like some far more expensive projectors can do. Okay. Uh, it does have Amazon's Echo built in. Switch to PS3. Well, that's pretty cool. I like that. And now we can play God of War. So if you're a gamer, oh. this would be a pretty good experience. What is the refresh rate on this? Is this something that we're not going to worry about? Now, that's a good question on this. Is it a 60 hertz imager and it's just fixed? Or can it do a multiple of, say, 24 for 24p playback from all your cinema content? That, to me, I just don't know off the top of my head. And that's something I would be very curious to know. I don't know hope, either. I don't one would hope it would be like, say, 120 hertz imager because that's an even multiple of 24. Right. So, and 60, it works as well. In terms of just frame doubling. We're going to talk more about this in the call for help in just a little bit. So I'll dig but up some specs on that. Games tend to be 60p. TV Blu-ray, like we were just watching, 24p. Yes. Um, so that's a... Now let me turn the sound up, because one of the other selling points of this is they have Harman Kardon speakers built into the projector. Now, honestly, I'm not sure if that's a great <laughs> idea, because... If you're going to buy a $10,000 TV, you're probably going to buy a decent AV receiver and some 5.1 sound or 7.2 sound. Nevertheless, this is a wireless sub. It's got two Harman Kardon tweeters, 50-watt audio, 60-watt wireless subwoofer. It's, it sounds pretty good. It's doing a decent job I having two built-in stereo speakers I don't know what the, don't know what the market sub. is. But I guess I figure, well, they're going to throw it in. It's a $10,000 TV. You don't need a, an AV receiver. You don't need surround sound for this. If you want to just set it up for the football game, this would be fine. It's good to go just the way it is. But yeah. like you said, too, if you do have a dedicated room and you can do the 5-1 or, you know, whatever, Atmos setup, that it's ready to go for that as well. But this is a decent-sounding set of speakers for let alone a flat panel TV, just even even other projectors I've listened to. And I have to say, the, we've got lights on in this room. We've got TV lights. We couldn't be shooting this. And it looks great. That's the benefit of a screen like this, the ambient light rejection versus something it's like really a, a, strong. a matte white screen especially. Yeah. Those just get annihilated in rooms like these. And what this, a great way to play a video game, man. This just comes oh. to life. Forget VR. Sometimes on projectors, you'll find that lag can be an issue with certain types of games. Right. Uh, and that's something they're always working on. And if you do enable a game mode, you may not have all of the other visual adjustment features that you wouldn't normally have anyway. But... 
It's still, I, once you start viewing content on a large enough screen to really perceive the detail, like this is honestly a perfect size for 1080p Blu-ray. Right. Just to be able to pick it apart, right. to see every little Don't issue Don't worry with about it. the 4K HDR, 1080p, that's fine. Oh, that's and the calibration controls allow for superb image reproduction for that content. And you, could you do this? Show me the weather. Currently in Petaluma. A hundred inches of weather, baby! <laughs> that's the biggest weather forecast you ever got. It has built-in Amazon Echo. <laughs> <laughs> of all uh, the things we could be watching on this TV, that seems to be the least interesting. God of War or the weather? Yeah. Let's see here. It has Netflix, YouTube, Prime Video, Vudu, Pandora, iHeart, Pluto TV. You know, it's a smart TV. It was the official TV, you may remember, of the 2018 FIFA World Cup. They, they had, had that app. sweet app where yeah. you could watch all of the games, too. 37 and angles. <sighs> Why didn't I buy this then? They need to offer that for more than... Switch to Xbox. Oh, getting away from me. Were you going to play that game? You can't. You got to watch some more Seashore. This more is, Blue Planet. Too. If I can get a little David Attenborough. Yeah, there's a, oh, soothing you want some Attenborough? Voice. I can turn oh, it up a little bit. No, I, yeah, he's in there. Yeah. He is the best. Remember the penguin. <laughs> watch as he seeks a new way of life on an island far, far away. Um, what else can we tell you about this? It does come with professional installation. I want to say this is a 60 hertz imaging system and not a multiple this, of now 24. the video, the, the DVD is only 24 frames, right. right? As all Blu-rays tend to be. Most TVs are dealing with a 60 hertz refresh rate in terms of how many times that per second. That gives it a nice solid feel to it, doesn't it? It I does, think. but it's kind of an odd multiple because it isn't e it isn't not, even with 24, right? Or it isn't a, a right. divisible by 24, and that's why 120 is just one of those nice numbers. Or in some cases, like say with the TCL Roku TV. That's a 60 hertz panel, but they actually drop the frame rate down to 48 hertz when it's doing 24p input. So you still get that multiple of 24 to keep just motion to be cinema-like, or uh, just so that motion looks like it would in the movie theater and not artificially smooth or with a hitch to it as it does a panning shot or something like that. You know it's what I say to that? Ooh, fishes! <laughs> Fishes on the screen. Those look intelligent. They look like they're about to walk. Oy, oy, oy. I think they're going to host a show. Best of show nominee for CES. There are more coming. Uh, I have to say, you, there's a little bit of a sacrifice because it's projection, but it is the best looking projection I've ever seen. And given its flexibility, if you can live with the price, $9,000, this Hisense 100 inch 4K Ultra HD Smart Laser TV is really sweet. I, I want this for the Super Bowl. It handles rooms with light pretty damn well. Yeah. I really well, that's, appreciate that. This is that. where, I mean, if I were going to get this, this, we'd put it in the big room, the gray room, because it's your party room, right? Totally. Anyway, we thank Hisense for uh, coming out, and thank you, Chris, for installing it. And uh, I have to say, it's do not ever get this in your business, because it's a complete productivity killer. Nothing happened this week. We all were just walking. TV. Throw a spreadsheet up there real quick. This is a home theater. I mean, it's like having a movie, movie studio. Movie you theater. know, for a 2.1 setup. It's not bad, is it, it? it? And for a large room like we're in, it is well done. Mute volume. Hmm, I'm not sure. Yeah. Me neither. Nothing. No, I'm not sure either. I got, I got nothing. That is a glorious looking picture, though. Yeah. Yeah. What so detailed. Are. What are those? Polywogs? I don't know. I think he's going to walk. I swear to God. It's going to start walking or it's talking. It's going to start walking. Next, the world's smallest gaming <laughs> laptop. At least that's what the Razer says, the Razer Blade. But first, Jason Howell runs through the new features. Uh, and I, there's some really nice ones of the new Android Pie. Ooh. More power. Google made a lot of people happy this week by officially releasing the next version of Android and anointing it with its deserty name. Android 9, long referred to as Android P, is now Android Pie, not cherry pie or pecan pie or pie a la mode, just pie. And really, who doesn't love pie? Well, except for Debbie. She hates pie. Anyway, so we've known about the features of this latest version of Android for some time now, ever since Google launched the first developer preview back in March. I've been living with Pi since before it was Pi. So about five months now through all iterations of the dev preview period, and I've seen it evolve. I have to say that this final version is really nice. Let's take a look at some of the big features you can expect when Pi reaches your device sometime next year, if at all. What? I'm just being honest.
The visual presentation in Pi is updated throughout with Google's current penchant for all things round and in many cases white. Some might argue that it's wasted space, but it's definitely subjective. Personally, I quite like it. So let's see, features. First, this gesture pill at the bottom that is the way of the future for Android control, so you're going to have to get used to it. After five months of using this, I definitely have gotten used to it, thankfully. Swipe right to switch between apps, swipe left to do absolutely nothing, which is strange because a back button appears in many screens. Not sure why swiping left doesn't just do that. But anyway, swipe up, and that takes you to the new multitasking overview screen with full screen cards for open apps. And you can actually interact with the content within those cards, like copying text from them or sharing an image. Tapping that icon above the card brings up the pin to screen feature, as well as the split screen features that you might have been hunting for. Now, down at the bottom of the overview is this row of icons that might seem randomly generated. That's Google's AI working hard to surface apps it thinks you might need now. Now, based on contextual signals that you send, like your past behavior, maybe time of day, location, all that stuff. Normally, I don't care for predictive stuff like this, but I've really come to actually rely on this. It works really well over time. In the morning, I get headspace. In the evening, I get just watch. It's pretty awesome. Once I put my trust in it, and now I use it all the time. Notifications up top are simplified, showing less of that noise to make room for, you guessed it, those pesky notchy phones like the unconfirmed but leaky Pixel 3 XL. In the notification shade, you'll actually notice much more context on messaging apps as one example, multiple lines of conversation, embedded images, that sort of stuff. Pi will also recognize when you commonly swipe a notification card away every time from a given app, and it will actually ask you if you want to hide that app's notifications going forward. Pi, in this case, is looking out for you. Settings-wise, things have been continually tweaked and refreshed. Now things look just a little less drab with more color in those rounded icons, hopefully making this seem less like an endless stream of words and more like distinct sections with cute little pictures to draw your eyes in. And since we're in settings, a big addition that we haven't really seen until this release is the ability to install and use the new digital well-being functionality that provides users with app controls to help curb phone use and abuse. Even at this stage, users must have Android Pi installed on a Pixel device, Pixel uh, 2 XL in my case, and then sign up for the beta to get the download link for digital well-being. That places the option in the settings right here. And then from there, you can see a super interesting chart that kind of breaks out how much of your device time is spent using which app on your phone. You can also set up wind down. That's a feature that will turn the display to grayscale and activate do not disturb settings for blocking notifications from view. So you have a visual cue to kind of put the phone down and focus on other things like sleep or Netflix. And in dashboard, you can actually set time limits for apps to control how much you use those apps if you just can't help but open Twitter 200 times a day. One feature called Shush that's supposed to activate Do Not Disturb mode automatically when you place your phone down on the surface, screen down, isn't present yet, but should arrive in a future update. Google has tightened up app access to things like cameras and microphones when an app runs in the background, so a rogue app, in this case, can't snoop on you when you are unawares. And one big change with Pi is how it's being offered to phones. This is actually big news. Google has a historical problem with updating the tens of thousands of devices that run Android to the latest version, and it's made lots of changes to tackle that, like last year's Project Trouble. We're starting to see the fruits of all that labor with Pi. Not only do Pixel devices get Pi on day one, the Essential Phone is officially the first non-Google phone ever to get the latest major version of Android on day one of the OS release. Not bad, but let's be real, Google has a long way to go. You, for example, likely have a device that isn't getting Pi now, might get it by year's end, and quite possibly may never get it because updates on Android are a nightmare. But things are improving, and that's at least a glimmer of hope. I hope you've enjoyed this walkthrough of Pi. I'm Jason Howell, and I talk about Pi and sometimes even eat Pi on All About Android every week here on Twit.tv. Oh, I'm looking forward to having Pi every Tuesday, 5 p.m. Pacific. From now on, as we watch All About Android, there is a new feature in here. It's, it's under the uh, security and location features under advanced. Uh, that I that I really like, and I'll show you it real quickly. For people who travel a lot, there's always this concern with a fingerprint reader or face recognition on a device that the TSA, the Border Patrol, the security people might say, 
unlock your phone, Robert, and you'll have to put your fingerprint on and unlock it. Uh, we know that they are prohibited from doing that with a password. That's why I reboot my phone now. You don't have to now with this new feature on Android Pie. Watch, I'm going to press the on-off switch and hold it. Whoops, that's the volume control. Press the on-off switch and hold it. And I've enabled a new button. There's always power off and restart, right? There's also, by the way, this is another new feature. You can do a screenshot from there. But look at that lockdown. Once I press lockdown, not only does it lock the phone, but the fingerprint reader no longer unlocks it. Perfect. Face ID no longer unlocks it. You have to enter your passphrase. And if you are really security focused, if you use a nice, long, strong passphrase, you know, it's been generally held that, and, and you know, that's not they're not going to try, but that law enforcement can't force you to divulge a password. That's far they, more elegant than me rebooting my phone every time I watch it. I know. Isn't that a nice feature? Yeah. So that lockdown feature is another feature in Android Pie that I, I value. Love it. Yeah, I'm, I I think Android Pie is fantastic. And like you, I'm very excited about the new um, Well, I finally just Pixel got Android 3. 8, finally, on my phone. <laughs> That's why you get a Pixel. You yeah. get a Google phone. That's what's You're happening. You're going to have the latest version all along. When is it? October? Uh, that's what they say. We don't know. We don't know. Nobody says Bring for it. sure. But we're starting to see the, the leaks, which means they're making them, right? So what is this? This is, what, according to Razer, the smallest 15-point-inch gaming laptop made. Now, there are a lot of caveats on Gaming, shmaming. This is just a cool-looking This notebook. is a nice laptop. And at the price that they're offering, I think it's a powerhouse for a fairly good price. But, man, does it look good. This is the Razer Blade 15.6 inches. A lot of times with gaming laptops, it looks like a 56 Chevy. You've got <laughs> fins, you've got blowers. You've, it's a it's, couple inches thick normally. It's heavy. This is, I mean, we're running the latest Coffee Lake i7 out of here, an eighth generation with six cores, 12 threads, 2.2 gigahertz, uh, 1 gigahertz, uh, I mean, 4.1 gigahertz uh, all the way up. Oh, oh, this is not a touch screen. So they have a couple of different screens available. This is the gaming screen, a 1080p okay. full HD non-touch screen. The, the theory being a gamer doesn't care about touch. A gamer is probably not caring too much about uh, resolution because you don't want to turn it up to 4K. Everything will slow down. And they offer this at 60 hertz and 144 hertz. That's really for different cool. options. There's a super high frame rate version. So if you're a serious gamer, I don't want to log just in. Even desktop and work. I keep touching the screen. <laughs> There's something wrong with me. Would you? Would you? How does this mouse thing work? All right. So, <laughs> this touch I'm, touch, right there. I'm touching the screen. Nothing's happening. Nothing's happening. RGB keyboard. Uh, yeah. Oh, I love that. But this is Razer's known for this. But what I really like is you've got a very high-end processor. Uh, this also has a discrete GPU. Um, you have your choice between a GeForce GTX 1060 or what we have in here, which is the 1070. Nice. I'm going to start running Bioshock I Infinite. It might take me a little time to get that going. Uh, There's also 16 or 32 gigs of DDR4 RAM. They chose the RAM that oh, is... Uh, fantastic. Yeah, a little faster, but uses a little bit more juice. Okay. Battery life is not bad on this, but it's not going to be uh, all-day battery life. You're talking three, four, five hours, depending on what you're doing. You're typically going to plug this in if you're doing any kind of serious gaming anyway to get the max performance Absolutely. and cooling out Most of it. Most of the time, you're going to plug it in. I always look for laptops with Type-C charging, but you can't do that on this. This is a 200-watt charger. Type-C tops off. Yeah, Type-C chops off at uh, at 100 watts. So Bring the power. You're going to need the juice. And that's so you can play the game and not drain the battery while you're playing the game. You Gorgeous stereo keep speakers. Keep plugged in. Right next to the keypad on each side. Speakers are pretty decent. Uh, as you said, it has the RGB keyboard, although they say for better battery life, pick a color and stick with it. But it will yeah. rotate through the colors. And this has a weird feature that gamers will understand called it's an anti-ghosting keyboard. That means you can do five key macros without losing any keys. Perfect. Uh, not something I do, but apparently gamers like to do this. I think the extruded aluminum, actually no, it's CNC milled from a single piece Isn't of that billet nice? for the aluminum chassis. On and this. of it's, course, it's not plastic. They're going almost bezel-less. So you get a <sighs> lot of screen in a fairly compact Thing. This is a laptop you'd be proud to show off at any time. It doesn't have all the frilly, weird 50s features that some of these crazy no. gaming laptops do. I've this is a subtle, beautiful, well-designed uh, laptop that I think really looks I like having the great. speakers on the top next to the keyboard pointing like at you where yeah. you can actually hear it pretty yeah. well. Front-firing stereo that's way speakers. way better than my notebook. Uh, it has TPM's 2.0 security, so you know you get good encryption if you're. It's Windows 10, obviously. Uh, AC Wi-Fi, 
Bluetooth 5, what other specs can I tell you? It is not a super great webcam 720p. Who cares? Mm. You know, Skype, you don't buy this for anyway. Skype, right? 80 watt hour lithium ion battery with NVIDIA Optimus support. All of that goes to making it be at, at least usable on battery. But again, if, if, you're a, if you're a gamer, battery is not the most important thing. I should probably turn this all the way up to maximum. It'll <laughs> easily handle all the maximum settings on this, all the anti-aliasing you want, because this is the 1070 version of the GTX. It's going to do that. Wow. Isn't that fun? I love this game. I know it's an old game, but... This is the first game I've oh, played in a lot. If of. you've never played the first one, that's a must. You got to play all of them, right? One of the so, must-play games out there. So uh, I wonder if I should go back and do the uh, the high-quality video. I think the options. beauty too of having discrete graphics like a 1060 right. or a 1070 in this case from Nvidia is the fact that you can go right to their website and download the latest drivers. You think about how it was five, ten years ago, where whatever driver was built into that notebook when it shipped was all it will ever get. And this this is just nice in terms of being able to stay compatible. Stay updated with the latest performance updates. They say that each display is color calibrated out of the box. Very That's nice. something Apple's always done, but it's rare in a PC uh, laptop. That means if, and I think they're aiming this at creators as well. There is a, a 4K higher resolution display with 10-point oh. touch that's really more for video editors and photographers. So with a calibrated display, they are aiming this at more than just uh, gamers. They're aiming it at the creative professionals as well. Think about how much uh, video rendering and editing in general can tax a system. And having, having a quote-unquote gaming system is exactly what you want. Now, remember uh, that Sherlyn was talking about a water-cooled Note 9. This is not water-cooled. It is vapor-cooled, but it is does have an active cooling. Uh, solution, vapor chamber cooling, uh, high performance, low noise fans push air across the dual heat exchanges to keep it fairly cool. And I have to say, you're using the FLIR on this thing. Does it look hot at all to you, Jerry? Do you, what are the hot spots on here? Not, it's, yeah, I mean, the hot spot's the screen. Well, and me. <laughs> but I don't see, and let's look at the bottom of it. I, I don't see a lot of heat on this thing. And do you hear really audible fans? I don't. And I think that's one of the things you want. That's 160 degrees on the bottom here, according to our FLIR camera. That's relatively quiet. But it is very quiet. So this thing is working. Edge lit, apparently from the bottom. When you were looking at it with the FLIR, you can tell on the screen itself the main glow. Oh, you're so smart. Look at that. So the fact that this is completely glowing all the way around. Oh, now well, the just at the bottom, you can kind of see. There it is. Right that's there. probably edge lit along the bottom, and then reflected as such to make the whole screen light up. Wait, what are you doing? It's getting hotter and hotter and hotter. <laughs> are you Scaling. doing anything on the flare? All right. Well, I guess as the game uh, begins, doesn't that look nice? Wouldn't you be proud to be bringing that to your next LAN party? This oh, is yes. the razor blade. Now the pricing varies, of course. And how you spec this out starts at eighteen ninety nine. You could get it all the way up to twenty eight ninety nine if you put the four K display on it with a touch screen. If you put the ten seventy in it, thirty two gigs of RAM. It doesn't have the giant hard drives that the Apples do. It stops at five twelve own, gigs. Throw four Who terabytes cares? in there later. If you it want is to. NVMe PCIe. It's oh, a nice. M dot two SSD, so it's very fast. Um, External graphics card support. Oh, isn't that interesting? Yes, because. Remember that the Razer folks also make the Razer Core uh, X, which is an eGPU. So if you really did want to use this on a desktop and you were willing to spend a little more, the eGPU is only $300 for the enclosure, then obviously you'd have to get a 1080 Ti or something to put in it. But the you CPU could absolutely in there beef is going to be up. fine for most games going forward for at least a few years. But if you did want a graphics you've update a, you've got a, without you've got having a to buy a whole new notebook, you got a hardware path. Yeah. Uh, it's got a full... Now, they're really paying attention to the kinds of screens. This makes a lot of sense. Gamers may hook it up to. You could get up to three more screens on here for a total of four. Full-size HDMI. That's a mini display port. It's got three USB connectors. It's got Thunderbolt uh, as well, Thunderbolt 3. So you could have one, two, three more 4K screens coming off of this. Perfect. Of course, you've got enough GPU to do it. Here's the other, on the other side, the other... Uh, Thunderbolt 3 ports, and yes, a headphone jack, just like the Note 9. <laughs> That's that solid <laughs> aluminum build. Doesn't That's that feel good? good? Yes. Yeah. It, so it, I think we really like this. If you're looking for a ex relatively expensive, not Apple expensive, but relatively no, expensive but laptop. There's that, a serious amount of technology in there, yeah, though, that you know, feels good. Sure, you could build a desktop system, similar performance, yeah. but cheaper, but this gets a form factor that's, what, half an inch thick? 
Maybe, exactly. a, maybe a little bit more. I think it's pretty nice. I think it's pretty sweet. I have friends who are way into gaming notebooks because that's just their preferred. Right. They want to be able to move that gaming system around easily and still enjoy PC gaming. And I know they are eyeballing this notebook. Should we go, should we go for a, a little uh, row? Sail into the Time lighthouse. To Time to go to the lighthouse. And then it all goes sideways. I stupidly set this up for 1999 mode, which is a new mode in the... This is the uh, new remastered I might version. have to go back and check this out. <laughs> It's a great game. Been a while. Yeah. 1999 mode is basically unplayable mode. <laughs> okay. <laughs> At least for me. Uh, we will next week. That, by the way, that's the Razer Blade 15.6-inch. Uh, they call it the world's smallest gaming laptop. It's pretty darn nice. Glorious. We will have the eGPU. Actually, we have it in-house, the Razer Core X. And I'm going to try that with this next week, and I will try it with the Mac, mm. the i9 Mac, if we can figure out how to get the NVIDIA drivers working. That should be interesting. And it's still running. But still it's okay. Noise. It's still okay. And you know what? Close the lid and the light stays on. Configured by us. <laughs> I think that's designed for, obviously, this is designed for using with external uh, screens. Uh, yes, exit the game. It sounds or, good. I thought the sound I, was pretty good on that. Having no? up-firing speakers on a notebook is rare, let alone it's you nice know, stereo have. like yep. that. Yep. It sounds way better than the edge systems I've seen on too many thinner notebooks. Now, I'm glad you're here because we have a call for help that definitely requires Robert Heron. Uh, let's uh, do a little call for helping dun, dun, dun. with William in Much Wenlock. UK. He sent us this video. Watch, Robert. I have a question for Robert Heron about video frame rates. My NAS has many recordings that I've collected over the years, which may be at 24, 50, or 60 frames per second. Years ago, I used to play them through a WDTV live box that could be configured to output at the original frame rate, and my TV used to confirm this. Now I'm using a Chromecast or a Roku both of which output at a fixed frame rate of 60 frames per second. Can Robert please explain to me what goes on when playing, for example, a 24 frame per second DVD or Blu-ray rip, and say if this compromises playback quality in any way? By the way, I'm a long-time Twit viewer. Thanks for helping an old techie like me <laughs> keep up to date. I know he's an old techie. Did you see that pile of wires off his right shoulder? <laughs> Thank you, William. It's the hidden secret for everyone. And I have one answer uh, for this question. Ooh, look, fishes. But thank goodness. <laughs> <laughs> More fishies. More fishes. Robert Heron is uh, here to answer. Uh, before you answer, though, I just want to show you, because I didn't show it. This is the 230-watt power supply. Look how small a brick is Not for the razor blade. It has to be external. It has a... to be. 230 watts? Are you kidding Jeez Louise. Don't lose that sucker. No, that's power. All right, so what? first of all, would you translate what William was asking? Uh, content, depending on where you are in the world, and for cinema versus television, it's all so, produced at a certain number of frames per second. The original film frame rate was 24 frames a second. And they chose that generally because... Generally still is. That would use the least film stock and still, thanks to persistence of vision, look fairly smooth in its animation. And we almost never would watch that. Even in commercial cinemas, you won't actually see that presented at 24 hertz. You'll actually still frame triple it to say 72 hertz to okay. help eliminate some of that flicker. And we're not to, even using film in a lot still, of movies anymore, but they're still shooting at the 24. The original content still at 24 frames per second. And that... What we're seeing right there, that's 24 frames a second. That actually applies. Now, it may no longer be after going through a display system. And right. that's where the problems start to occur. In the case of William, he was talking about some of the content he enjoys locally is at native 25 hertz. And then some of the movies he's he in has the UK, in his collection. Right? That's PAL. And then, and then if he has a PAL TV, the chances are the TV is going to be compatible with it. So if you have this variety of content that has different refresh rates, and we were just talking about a specific Blu-ray that has a 60 hertz refresh rate on it. Right. And the ideal would be to have a TV that supports every one of those and then to be able to play that back at the exact same frame rate. In or effect, at, at least an mode. even multiple of that frame rate, that 72 uh, instead of 60. I had instance. mentioned that that popular TCL TV, their 6 Series, that is a like a $650 wonder of a 4K TV. That has a 60 hertz panel, but when you feed it a 24p <laughs> signal from like a Blu-ray player or a 4K Blu-ray player, it actually switches up to a 48 hertz mode, which is an even multiple 2X. of 24. Yeah. And that, that really is what you want to have happen to preserve that filmic look. Like, it's specifically noticeable really in panning shots where the camera's going across the scene and you want those, 
those judder effects to be nice and even and not, oh, it's doing a couple smooth ones and then it hitches and then it does a couple more smooth uh, one then it hitches. So if you don't have an even multiple, you're going to have to do a little math. You're going to have some fractions. You're going to have some modulus math to do and that's when it's going to jump or hitch. He was talking about his Western Digital device that apparently had a native output mode. So it just said, oh, what is the frame rate of this content? I will feed a signal out at that frame rate. And if the TV is compatible with a variety of these frame that's rates. That's ideal. It, that is, yeah. indeed. It will handle it and be able to process that for you. There are external video processors and things that can take those kind of signals and get it to whatever your display device is. But uh, ideally, you would want it either at the same frame rate as the original right. content or a multiple of it to, so, keep, to keep the look the same. We were talking about this razor blade and the fact that it can do two different frame rates, 60 hertz, 60 frames per second, or 144 hertz. Yeah. Where does 144 come from? <coughs> Gamers. They, uh, that's uh, a standard. It's just Also, too, even if you that's look at... That's 72 like the, times 2. Or even take the iPad. Pro pad or the I iPad Pro, the one that goes 120. That does 120. Hertz. That that's a nice multiple because it's compatible two times with 60. two times 60 or five times or four. Oh five yeah, times, five times, times 24. Yeah, so it's oh that's interesting. So 120p would be a great kind of lingua franca. It, that for would be everything. ideal, and that's why a lot of people are, when they're shopping for good home theater TVs, are looking for those 120 hertz display devices. Because chances are, it would be able to do a nice, even multiple. At least 24s, 30s, 60s. Exactly for the variety of content they're looking yeah, at, and those and, are the most common. Three. And in the UK, all of those TVs are also compatible with 50 100 hertz signals as well. Again, because so. PAL is 25 frames yeah. per second. So. Now we were watching a Blu-ray on this nice big 100 inch TV. And when I turned it on, it said, oh yeah, that's 4K 24 frames. That's what it's receiving as its input. And Is that typical you. of a Blu-ray play a disc? Yes. 24 frames? Yeah, all, all your DVDs. This was shot on a red camera, probably at 60 frames. And then sampled down, if anything. <laughs> they Why? Made, they, they obviously are shooting some things at much faster frame rates to achieve slow motion effects and things uh. like that. but. In terms of just cinematic presentations, it's still 24 People hertz. People want to see. We've seen experiments with things like the Hobbit movie that was done in 48 hertz. Oh boy, did that look and, weird. Yeah, that was a little odd. And then so the the DVD I was talking uh, with you about, and I will bring this in because uh, I'd like to play with this, is Ang Lee's film Billy Lynn's Long Halftime Half -time Walk. Walk. Ang Lee thought it'd be interesting to film a movie. I know because my friend Steve Martin was in it, was talking about this. Wouldn't it be interesting to film a movie? With cameras that do 120 frames a second. Very little blur. And by the way, he told the actors, no makeup. No. We're going to do super high resolution, 4K, 120 frames a second. So you can't wear makeup. It's, it's So when you watch this movie, either in the theater, when you watch it on DVD, it's 60 frames. You're not going to see anything like the real thing here in this trailer. When you watch the, the Blu-ray at 60 frames, it's creepy. It's super clear. It's like the guy's in the room with you. And you see defects on the faces, freckles, acne, that you, <laughs> you age spots, sorry Steve, but it's true, that you wouldn't see in a normal movie. It's, well, and this was what Ang Lee was trying to create, was this almost a sense of discomfort that you were right there. He had the camera, the actors looked directly into the lens. Uh, it's a very interesting movie to watch. The first time through, it's disconcerting because it's too realistic. Uh, compare that to, say, shooting at 24 frames per second. There, there's going to be more motion within each still frame, more blur per frame compared to something shot at 60, let alone 120. 24 and, is, is dreamy. Kind of dreamlike. It, it's it's that, magical. There is really something magical about it. it it's a look it's to not the realistic. content. It's less realistic. No. Yeah. You know you're looking at film. Right. You know you're looking at a piece of authored content when you see it at that kind of a right. frame rate. And the, the Hobbit bothered people. People said Gandalf's staff looked at like it, he got it. It's a plastic staff from Staffs R Us. It looked. It didn't look real. <laughs> It was like made out of resin, right? And oh. so if you're a filmmaker and you're going to be filming at these high quality frame rates, you've got to, everything's different. It's got I, to, I think it's in the future they will continue to shoot at very high frame rates just to capture less blur perhaps. And that's something and they can downsample. Yeah, they, they can always add in that effect back. And right. then there will always be the purists who say, nope, I'm just going to stick with, you know. It's an interesting debate. The, People like James Cameron 
believe high frame rate and high resolution are the future of film, right? That's how he wants to I, shoot it. I think especially if you're looking at things also like VR, where you're wearing goggles on your face. You do need the high resolution in that, that case. That actually probably would help quite a bit in terms of not yeah. only the improved frame rate, but less motion blurring. Right. So... Uh, yeah, and a the lot. screen is this far away from your eyes, so obviously higher resolution is important to avoid the screen door effect. So exactly. we're going to see 8K screens just for that reason alone, if nothing else. Very interesting. I'm so glad you were here. Thank, Thank you, you for William. the question, William. Next week, we've got a uh, we get what we do is we bring domain experts in and then ask you for questions <laughs> in that domain. It's Megan Maroney next week. Uh, no, is it? Who is next week? Alex, Alex Lindsay. Lindsay. Oh my gosh. Video production, audio production, 360 editing. Mm. He is the king of that. Alex Lindsay will be here. Here's how you ask our question, your question. On Need tech help? The new screensavers are here with answers. Email your tech questions to newscreensavers at twit.tv. Well, we're going to go back to Netflix and chilling and maybe answer a few mailbag questions. <laughs> Excellent. But first, here's <laughs> Megan Maroney with some gadgets she takes to bed with her. If you've been following Florence Ion and me on our 12-week series on Internet of Things and the smart home, then you know that for me, no space in my house is sacred or free from devices connected to the Internet. Well, maybe one space. My bed. Still, it's not free from technology, so this week I'm showing off three pieces of tech that I would take to bed with me. And note, none of them connect to the Internet. First... The Dow Dow by Live Lab. This came recommended by Twit supervising producer Colleen. Now, Colleen manages so many of the comings and goings on this network that she understandably has a hard time sleeping at night. So she got herself this little white hockey puck in hopes that it would help her fall asleep faster. It was designed by Insomniacs and it shines a blue pulsing light at the ceiling. You keep it by your bedside and when you turn off the light, you try to match your breathing pattern with the pulsing light. So let's, let me show you. If you're like me and you have no trouble falling asleep at night, but you often wake up in the middle of the night with racing thoughts and have trouble falling back to sleep, you just tap the Dow Dow once for an eight minute session of light pulsing or twice for 20 minutes. Now, whether you have chronic insomnia or you just have a lot of stress in your life, try the Dow Dow. If it doesn't work, they have a 100 day money back guarantee. The Dow Dow costs $59. Second, you might have heard me in the past talk about products from a company called Witty Designs. I like their smart alarm clocks with soothing lights and their notification pixel lights. Recently, they sent us these little portable night lights for your bedside. These $19 night lights have motion sensors inside of them, and they come with a 3M tape adhesive mount that you hang near your bed. If you need a light, you can use the button or the motion sensor. Now, if you don't want the light activated through a motion sensor, you can turn that off too. Once you charge up the device, it will remain charged on standby for 90 days. The handy comes in white and black. Finally, if you enjoy listening to music or even podcasts when you sleep, but you don't want to bother the other person in your bed, you might want to try the Humu Smart Cushion from Flex Sound. Connect the pillow to your phone or tablet via Bluetooth, and then you can not only listen to music, you can also feel the music. The pillow is great for gamers or for watching movies. If you can't feel the sound of the Death Star, what even is the point? Oh, why did you have to be so brave? The Humu offers 3D stereo sound, a removable washable cover, and eight hours of battery life. If you're in the UK, you can buy one right now. In the U.S., the Humu Smart Cushion is in the production stage of its Indiegogo campaign. You can order yours for $279 or two for $499. Now, what technology do you take to bed with you? I want to know. Email me at Megan at twit.tv or find me on Twitter. I am at Megan Maroney. And don't forget to watch the other shows I host, iOS Today with Leo, Tech News Weekly with Jason Howell, and Know How Internet of Things with Florence Ion. Thank you, Megan Maroney, and your giant speaker pillow. Thank you for being here, by the way. Hey. I, I miss working with Robert. He's great. I know you do a great show. Uh, AVXC? 
AVXL. AVXL. AV Excellence for short. XL. AVXL for short. With our buddy Patrick, <laughs> yeah. Patrick uh, Norton. And uh, that's at AVXL.com. Yep. You can See, hit us up there. That's Subscribe to our RSS feed. Nice. Listen to us ramble. And if you're well building, edited rambling, I will say. Well edited rambling. <laughs> See, that's that's what we're missing here. We just have rambling. Uh, we do. Let's face it. But uh, if you also, if you're setting up a home theater, and you want the best of the best, Heron Fidelity. That's the that's this is the guy. I try. You were. Saying, I have the gear. You just did this. I won't say any additional. Uh, an anonymity is important, but you just did a home theater that's really sweet. Ah, uh, a few. A few. And I just added a bunch of new kick-ass gear to my collection so nice i have a meter that's worth more than my car now <laughs> yeah please these are the things heron these are, fidelity <laughs> these are my problems <laughs> <laughs> and please come back we love having oh, robert on anytime the show. it is time for the mailbag and uh, oh look at puppies no no not puppies no, i think that no. was a corpse that's a dead you're now looking that's food at a dead deer oh oh good lord and what here's is... all the plastic it's eaten Oh, take that off the TV and let's look in the mail. <laughs> yes. Oh, everybody, look. It's the, it's gone. Wow. <laughs> it's the new uh, an Android P. There is ice cream cake still in there. Is there, is there piece left? Oh. I, here, let's just, uh, why don't you just uh, have some, Robert? No. <laughs> Thank you. No. <laughs> That Anybody? Look, that looks yummy. Ice cream cake? I just kind of want to like grab it, but oh, never mind. No. No. That's funny. So we, we got both Android O and Android P in one. And if Android would just come out with a cake version, we'd be really hey now. That's <laughs> just disgusting. Tasty. Are you sure? That, that's, that looked pretty That's not after being eaten? That's that's before being eaten? Okay. Pick an uh, email. Any email. I'll take this one. All right. I have email one. I always I seem to win that. Email two. Win that game. Dear Robert. Crumbs everywhere. Crumbs everywhere. That's all right. <laughs> Dear Robert and Leo, I have a 65-inch Vizio TV that has some stuck pixels. They're about an inch long. An inch long? That's more than one pixel. Hey, I have seen that exactly. They're not black, so I don't think they're dead. I know there are programs you can run to unstick LCD monitor pixels, so my thought is I could hook up a laptop on my TV, run one of those apps. I believe they're basically uh, generate a flashing square. You position over the pixels over time, it may unstick them. It's like shaking it. It's like hitting it on the I side. Give it a jiggle. Do you have any uh, issues Pixel with running jiggling. that for several hours? Any suggestions? You know, um, I had that tell very me if thing I'm nuts. happened to my workstation monitor. But somebody once told error. me, if you have a stuck pixel like that, you just take a little rag and you rub it vigorously. I'd be careful vigorously part. Uh, <laughs> Will that really, could that actually work? Yes, actually. What's happening with a stuck pixel? Something is stuck. And because it's not in a line going through it, chances are it's not along the electronics along the edge of the panel. So that could have been something that either struck the panel or oh. it was just a factory defect to begin with. So and it manifested itself at some point, it, which it, I believe is what happened It's my understanding the way LCDs work you have a backlight of some kind. Most yep. recently, they're LEDs, but they used to be fluorescent tubes. And an LCD, a liquid crystal, is a shutter that opens and closes, right? That's the light, the light valve itself. It allows the light from the backlight through to your eyes. And it may have a color filter on it. Maybe there's red, All green, do. and blue, so that there's red, green, and blue shutters. All flat panels we look at have color filters. And that's how the light gets through. So a, what is a stuck pixel? In, is it a shutter that's... Either stuck open some or part of the subpixels in terms of the uh, thin film transistor isn't able to flip that anymore to it where it should be. It can't go open and close. So it is stuck at one particular shade or color. So this is oh, this one's always blue, and it no matter what the backlight doesn't is, doesn't change. Although if you ran one of those tools like the person mentioned, where you can put a little square over that that shifts through different colors, it might just kind of it might shake jiggle it loose. it loose. And I have taken like a soft, clean microfiber cloth and gently massage the gently. screen. Don't don't rub Not too hard. vigorous. Especially if there's any kind of screen coating or anything on that screen because if you apply too much pressure to it, you're you're going to wear some of that anti-reflective coating. You don't want it unevenly. Do that. Yeah. yeah. 
TV screens in general are far more susceptible to damage compared to like a mobile screen. Right. They tend to have better anti-reflective coatings on TVs, but they're also expected not to be people putting their hands on yeah, them all the time. Attention. So, so maybe better to do the software thing first. Try the software. I would also massage if you've got nothing left to lose. Massage the pixels gently. That's also if you have a. <laughs> I thought I, I thought that was a joke. That's really serious. Also, okay. if you have an LCD where you notice something called uniformity issues, like with a gray screen or a light white screen, you see some darkened blotchy patches, yeah. and you may notice that in things like hockey events, where right. they pan White across, ice and, and you, you see something on the screen that doesn't move with the rest of the picture. That's where using something like the massage method, where let the TV warm up, make sure it's running as bright as possible, give it about an hour, and then go over it gently just with a microfiber and rub it down. Uh, never spray things on your screen. Do not use any kind of harsh cleaners or anything. You know, that's the real problem. You don't want uh, to strip off that yeah. protective coat. Because they're, they're far more sensitive than the mobile displays that are designed to have your hands okay. on them all the time. Okay. So this is, that is an ugly But defect. my workstation monitor had that exact same looking thing, and I ran one of those tools over it, changing colors for Fixed hours it. on end. I don't recall if it was that or it finally just popped back one day, right. but I did it for a couple of days, and it was, it was at least not in the center of the screen, so it wasn't so annoying. But I was about to go get a new monitor, and then suddenly right. it kind of fixed itself. Because if yeah. it doesn't get fixed, the, and it still annoys you, you, really the only other thing is getting yeah. a new monitor. You Donate can't, it. You or... can't go in there and do surgery on it or anything no. like that. Perc All right, what do you have? Percussive maintenance. <laughs> That's, uh, that's, what the, that's what they call it in the military. Email number two. Yes. Hello, I've been listening to and enjoying your shows for years as I work on my vehicles or at my job. I'm half deaf due to many years of loud engines and rock music, so I'd like to see if a decent wireless surround system is available on a shoestring budget to pair with my TV at home. Thanks for any input. Signed, Mark. Now, when Mark says he's half deaf, that sounds to me like he wants something really loud. It, yes. <laughs> uh, <laughs> right? My, my, uh, is that what he's asking? I, it, it, well, or just good clarity for voices. Yeah. I mean, for TVs in general, sure, you can go with a good surround sound system with wireless speakers and things like that, but even a basic sound bar is going to dramatically improve the clarity of voices. Now, overall. so the voices in a 5.1 mix are in the center channel. They're generally optimized for that. Right yeah. in the middle there. Well, as, so one way to do that, of course, would be to have a center channel speaker on your surround sound system. Totally. Does a sound bar have the same kind of center speaker that you can turn up, for exactly. instance? Exactly, or it, it places all of those speakers right in front of the image so that that imaging of sound, and in the case of something like where Sonos engineers a speaker, they do add a tweeter that's front and center pointed right at you, especially on something like their new Beam sound bar, that it, it really does make the audio more easily understood and perceived, and I think just crisper. So it puts the voice in that tweeter. Yeah. And that's what the 5.1 mix does anyway. But that is the center channel. And that's there. where I think a majority of the, the sound energy coming out of you is in those sort of frequencies, in that, like, right. say, 1,000 to 3,000 range. You can so. feel the rumble, but you really want to... I mean, I think that's true. If you have hearing loss of any kind, which I do, uh, voices are the first thing to go. You lose that very ability difficult. to understand what people are saying. You can hear the voice perfectly clearly, but you can't quite make it out. And that's where a lot of people complain on their television. I'll, I'll they be honest. They can't hear what's the dialogue. I don't think my hearing is that damaged, yet I find my flat panel TV is horrible, with just, yeah. especially with voices, in terms of it being mixed with the background audio and things well, like I that. Well, I think that's also a symptom of the way they mix today. Right? It could very well be. But Kids simply today. upgrading to that sound bar or something that gives you a good, dedicated center channel channel yeah. for just dedicated to sounds and voices in particular is a great way to go. Otherwise, depending on the TV technology you have, if it's Bluetooth enabled, a good set of Bluetooth headphones is a fantastic way for you to be able then to manipulate the audio without disrupting other members of the you household. You can listen louder than, because they're going to say, that's too loud, Dad, but you could turn it up for yourself. Totally. Let them listen to the normal Totally. Level. Or flip on the noise canceling to just drown out. If Which you, headphones do you like for TVs? I have, well, I'm currently using a set of Samsung simply because they were what I had on hand right. and they work pretty damn well. I bought well, my mom a, a pair of Sennheisers designed fantastic. for TV. She loves them. And it's that exact situation where she's, a, a, you know, she's 85, with a little hard of hearing. She can turn it up, hear it very clearly, doesn't have to complain, and the rest of the household can. For my workstation, survive. I use one of the Sony's old school pro headsets with a, an external dedicated amp for that. Yeah. And that I absolutely love. But for TV viewing, Generally, it's a really good sound wireless bar. Wireless is nice. Or yeah. the wireless headphones. Do you like those new Son that new Sonos uh, Beam sound bar? I th 
Sonos makes some of the best sounding sound bars for the money and having Alexa built in, if that's your thing, yeah. that's always fun. Being able to just say Echo, turn on the TV or turn off the TV. I got a fire a, cube. You don't need to that. have a... And I love it. And that. when I leave the room, I can say, Echo, turn off the TV and everything. And it turns off the TV, the AV receiver. It's, it's awesome. It's a little thing, but it, it goes a long way toward general usability and I just know. making it it's fun. Cool. So that, <laughs> Did, did it, We've did triggered the beast. Respond? What are we watching? <laughs> We've got cave people now or something. Oh, sorry, Echo. I wasn't talking to you. Oh, see, that's what we do. We name our devices Echo not to con so that we don't say the A word on TV. But that means when I say Echo, everything in the, in the place wakes up. Computer. That. No, computer. That's the third one you can do. But. Or Amazon. I tried computer. Oh. It doesn't work because I say the word all the time. Everything wakes up all the time. Uh, all right. Hey, I thank you so much. For your wisdom and your guidance. You sure don't want to take a little Oreo ice cream cake with you for the road. I'm looking for a <laughs> bottle of water. <laughs> I don't need any more cake. Poor Robert. Look Whenever at anybody comes up here on, on Saturday, it's a long I'm just haul. getting back into my good diet. Uh, good. That, that is tempting this as hell, is to, though. This, you know what? This will convince you to eat well. Oh, yeah. That's so disgusting, you're not going to want to eat ice cream cake for another six minutes. Kids with metabolism, go at it. <laughs> Do it. We thank you all for being here. <laughs> yeah. We had a great studio audience, including the legendary Terry McGovern. Thank you, Terry. Yeah, if cool. you want to be in studio, just email tickets at twit.tv. We'll put a chair out for you. You can also watch our live stream, twit.tv slash live. We've got uh, oh. audio, uh, video, your choice, a number of different sources. IRC it, chat. That's my recommendation. If you're watching live, you want to have friends to watch with you. There's a bunch of great people in our chat room at irc.twit.tv. They're chatting while you're watching. You're all talking about the same thing, and it's kind of fun. Always consider that if you're watching live, irc.twit.tv. Now, you don't have to watch live because we've got on demand of everything we do at our website, twit.tv slash NSS for this particular show, New Screen Savers. Or search for the New Screen Savers in your favorite podcast program, Stitcher, Slacker, Tune in. You can ask your Amazon Echo or your Google Home. Just say, listen to the new screensavers. You'll get the latest episode. We love it if you subscribe, though. That way you'll get every episode the minute it's available Saturday evening. Uh, thanks for being here. And we'll see you next time on the new screensavers. Pie, anyone? Pie? Ice cream? Ice cream? Pie? Candy? Yay.